the next giant uh, uh, from this period is Isaac Newton. He lived in 1942 to 1727, quite a long life. And he's credited for uh, discovering the laws of motion and the law of gravity. He was, um, he remained early on without father and his mom remarried and he was raised by his grandparents. Uh, went to Cambridge in 1661 to study and then uh, one of the great plagues struck uh, England in 1665 and the university was closed and Newton went home and had enough time to think about things. And it's during that period where he came up with these, came up with these. And later on in life, he was asked how come that he was able to discover uh, such monumental things that change uh, 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 our understanding of nature a great deal. And his reply was because I was thinking about them all the time. I was thinking about them all the time. Okay? He wasn't interrupting his thinking by watching a TV show, or listening to the music, sending somebody a text message, uh, you know, checking the sports scores. He was thinking about these things all the time. There are some uh, uh, indications based on um, what is known about his life and his correspondence that he was probably autistic, okay? And it kind of uh, uh, falls in line with the fact that he was able to focus uh, to such extent on relatively limited uh, 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 thing, okay? Uh, and that's characteristic for, for people affected by autism. Of course, uh, there are different uh, degrees, uh, but he was most likely autistic and maybe that condition actually helped him uh, to make his discoveries because he was able to focus and concentrate so intensely on uh, relatively limited things. So I will not uh, give you a full-fledged account of his laws of motion. I'll just try to explain the essence of them. And basically what they say is as follows. If an object is not influenced by anything else, if it's far removed from any other objects so that there is no connection between them, there is no force, if you will, then it will be moving along a straight line with a constant speed, or as a special case, it would be at rest when the speed is zero. So, so if you are to uh, change the speed of an object, either uh, accelerated or decelerated, you need to exert the force on it. Also, if you want to change the direction of motion, you need to exert the force on it. In the absence of net force, the object moves along a straight line with a constant speed. Along a straight line with a constant speed, which could be zero, right? And then we say that the object is at rest. 